During the course of this presentation, you may see future capabilities of our combined technologies. Please make sure you carry out due diligence before implementing software based on the contents of this presentation. Welcome to Solve Data Downtime Before It Happens with Monte Carlo and PagerDuty. We're delighted to have Bar Moses, Chief Executive Officer of Monte Carlo, Manu Rajasekaran, Senior Director of Data Platforms and Analytics at PagerDuty. We will see a demonstration by Jaswinder Paul, Data Engineering Manager at PagerDuty. My name is Jorge Villamariona, and I'm part of the Product Marketing Team at PagerDuty. When we wrap up this session, you will be better acquainted with how Pager Duty and Monte Carlo join forces to manage and maintain the consistency, reliability, and resilience of the entire data pipeline lifecycle by identifying data issues before business users even know about them. Let's take a look at our agenda for the next few minutes. We just took care of the introduction. Manu will cover the PagerDuty data pipeline architecture and challenges. Barr will briefly walk us through the Monte Carlo platform. Jaswinder will show us a demonstration of the combined solution, and we will come back and recap some key points. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Uh, the PagerDuty digital platform, uh, operations platform, has been uh, known to DevOps team uh, for quite a long time. Our mission at PagerDuty is to revolutionize operations and build customer trust by anticipating the unexpected in an unpredictable world. PagerDuty takes an enormous collection of real-time events from your systems and uses event intelligence to reduce noise. We know that humans assisted by automation and AI is better than AI alone. And that is what PagerDuty is all about. This principle is all known in the DevOps area and IT ops area, SecOps area. But now we are bringing it also into the data, or, um, data ops area. And that is what today we will be going through. And the tools that we are going to be utilizing, especially Monte Carlo, is what we will cover in this session. The PagerDuty Operations Cloud ecosystem, we already have integrations towards customer service ops, IoT industrial ops, finance ops, and security ops, and marketing operations. In data operations, uh, this con con contains collecting all the data from multiple events across multiple systems and providing a single 360 degree view of data operations for all the stakeholders. That is what we do with PagerDuty operations. Let us go and look through some of the architecture of PagerDuty. As a modern SaaS company, we have a host of systems uh, ranging from Salesforce, NetSuite, um, and various other uh, billing systems, and our own product data, which all comes from a, uh, which constitute around 30 plus data systems. We use a variety of data ingestion systems, and our warehouse is mostly on Snowflake. The data transformation happens via GPTs and Python Snow, uh, SQLs, and data modeling happening um, through LookML's curated data sets, um, and the visualization through Looker Tableau. This architecture is pretty known in the, um, in the industry. Unique about us is also the data quality uh, uh, system that we use, which is Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo helps us monitor the data quality in both the data ingestion and inside the warehouse, uh, letting us know about what are the uh, issues that are happening in the data and data reliability. Let us see the typical data challenges that most organizations face in data operations. One is multiple SaaS tools leading to different signals from different areas. So you would have data issues coming from your data pipelines, from your data uh, warehouse, from data science models. A lot of it is also duplicate issues. 
leading to redundant incidents that BI team handles. Um, some of them your data teams are handling, and these are all independently working off each other. There is also a large volume of uh, cables, um, especially um, in modern data warehouses, you are looking at 3,000, 2,000, 4,000 cables. And it is difficult to put data quality on all these uh, cables unless you code for each one of them, which is a gigantic step by itself. The second challenge that you typically face is on engagement. You want both your leadership and analysts engaged on uh, what are the issues coming up? How are you proactively looking at it? And how can you know before they know it? The second issue is orphan data science models. We all know that data, uh, data science teams are, are proliferating and each of those data scientists move from one team to the other, uh, leading to a quite a lot of orphan data models. And you want the data engineering team and your operations team in line with the data scientists. The third reason is the team burnout. There's more time in operation means less time in development, which as all of you know, is not where we want to go for. The third portion of typical data challenges that you face is on the process. You want data scientists as a part of the operations escalation path. Your escalation path should be defined really well and you want priority to be defined so that your focus is on the most important uh, data challenges. Let us look at one of the examples, which is a data science use case. Data scientists usually write a lot of model drift test. They also write concept drift test. And there are uh, also upstream data drifts that happen. It is important to critical to monitor AI and automated and machine generated models as well. It is important that they, data science teams, are part of um, this exercise to look at data quality and look at various groups that are happening in the data and make it um, uh, and have it operated as a proper data operations, just like in DevOps. Integrating PageDuty to this uh, data science uh, area helps us um, monitor and be ahead of the uh, uh, of the business users. The, the third important thing is data science team should also have visibility, responsibility, and participation. All the AI models and everything uh, which are machine generated should also be part of the operations and PageDuty enables that. The last one has been a feature for PageDuty long, uh, for a long time, which is intelligent grouping and event management. And having intelligent grouping helps you track down common issues, which could be a data issue, which could be um, other issues in your data pipelines. Um, and having them grouped helps your operations team. Here is what our uh, main use case for PageDuty comes in. The 360-degree plan for data ops with PageDuty covers everything with one tool. Data ingestion via PageDuty. You will have signals from airflow, conductor, and other um, schedulers also come in. You might have data observability issues, which is the core of this presentation, which is data quality issues. You might have issues from Spark. You might have data science issues or even security issues which where your data security has been impacted. All this can be uh, covered with uh, PageDuty and that helps you harness the data signals, make sense of these events, respond and engage with the teams, analyze and learn this. The key part of our data operations with PageDuty is data observability. And for data observability, PageDuty uses Monte Carlo. And I call upon uh, Bar Moses, CEO of Monte Carlo, to give us an overview about how uh, Monte Carlo works and how he helps in maintaining data quality. Thank you so much, Manu. That was great. It's been such a pleasure working with you and your team over the last few years. Um, excited to, to spend a little bit of time telling you all about um, data observability with Monte Carlo and PagerDuty. Um, so at Monte Carlo, our mission is to help accelerate the adoption of data by reducing what we call data downtime. 
Um, let's double click into data downtime and what that actually means. So we define data downtime as periods of time when your data is wrong, inaccurate, or otherwise erroneous. Um, and there can be many, very, very many different reasons for that. Um, some of the symptoms that we see when, when folks and data teams experience data downtime um, have to do with uh, different pains that different teams feel. Um, some teams upstream make changes and actually can't see what's happening downstream, thereby creating data downstream, data disasters downstream. Um, some teams can't actually predict all the ways in which data will break and have to deal with disasters on a daily basis. Um, and some teams that are even further downstream can't know when data is wrong um, and don't even know who to ask for help. Um, so we see data downtime as a problem that's really sort of end to end across your stack can happen anywhere, whether it's data sources, data warehouses, data lakes, or even BI tools or downstream data products. Um, so what does it look like for data quality incidents today? How are those detected? Um, for data teams, the reality today is that 90% or more of them are detected by someone downstream who actually says, hey, the data here looks wrong. Um, that typically happens on a Friday afternoon right before you're headed out for the weekend, or even worse, you know, five minutes before you're actually going to use the data, whether that's an internal meeting to make decisions based on that data, or whether that's with a customer that's actually going to be using the data in real time. Um, and the result is that there's often days or weeks that pass before anyone on the data team notices, let alone actually detects or resolves um, the, the data quality um, incident. Um, this is a reality that's, you know, unfortunately all too familiar for, for folks across the data industry. Um, we can actually look to some of the best practices that we've developed in, in DevOps and SecOps to actually um, solving those. And that's where data observability comes in. So um, we're pioneering this new category called data observability. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants uh, like PagerDuty and, and helping to, to create this, um, this category. And, you know, we think about operationalizing our approach to trust in data. That actually takes into account three different um, sort of parts of, of the life cycle. The first is around detection, what we just talked about, which is helping data teams be the first to know about, <clears throat> about data breaking. Um, making sure that there are alerts that reach people at the right time with the right information. Um, the second part is once there's an issue, how quickly can we actually resolve that? Are we able to use radius assess assessment to understand, impact radius assessment to understand who, who, who else is impacted by this issue and what kind of severity should we assign to, to this issue? Um, and then finally, can we put uh, in place strong framework and best practices to actually prevent these issues to begin with? Um, can we introduce auto-generated insights that will help us build um, healthier uh, and more reliable data pipelines so that we don't even have to deal or can, or can reduce significantly the amount of data downtime? So how do we actually do this in practice? You'll see the demo um, in a few minutes, which will bring this to life, but just kind of introduce some of the ideas here. Let's double click into detection and how we actually detect some of these issues. <clears throat> For that, let me introduce um, what we call sort of the data observability pillars. There's five primary ones that we've come up based on hundreds of discussions that we've had with data teams that have helped us assess what are the common reasons for data breaking and what are the common ways in which teams deal with data going bad. Um, these five pillars are freshness, distribution, volume, schema, and lineage. And we believe that all of these together give you a strong hold on, on the health of your data. So starting with freshness, freshness is actually one of the most common reasons for why we see data going wrong. Uh, teams today and organizations today rely on hundreds, sometimes thousands of sources arriving on time, often multiple, day, day, often multiple times per day or per hour, um, and knowing in real time and in an automated way whether the data has arrived on time or not is especially critical for data teams. And so in this particular, this is a particular example of a freshness problem um, that sort of indicates that there might be a delay or a lag in, in data arriving on time. The second pillar is around distribution. This is really at the field level. We often find that data teams um, encounter unexpected values, if you will, in a particular field. Um, if there's a field that you're expecting to have 0% nulls and suddenly it's filled with nulls, that might indicate an issue. 
maybe it's negative values where those shouldn't exist. Um, many other examples at um, the distribution pillar in particular. The third example, or the third pillar, I'm sorry, is around volume. Um, so volume of data, something that, again, you'd want to introduce um, automated detection for this. Um, in this particular example, there's a table that you can see the rows are being added over time. Then suddenly, at a certain period of time, uh, rows are actually being deleted uh, in a way that's different from the historical pattern and one that you'd want to be aware of so you can start triaging. You can also see at the bottom that um, the button called investigating is actually highlighted, means that someone on the team is on this and is actually working through this. The fourth pillar is schema. So schema changes is actually one of the most common culprits uh, of data going wrong. There's oftentimes make, folks making changes in some area and, and other teams are unaware of that. In this particular um, example, you can see specific fields that are added, specific fields that are changed in type. Interestingly, you can also see at the top right that there are reports that are affected by this event. Um, let's double click into, that, into what that means. And that leads me to my the last pillar here which is lineage. Um, so lineage, both field level and table level lineage in combination with the health of the data actually allows us to have a really strong overview of what your data looks like, all the dependencies um, and the health of it. And so if a particular um, uh, uh, table uh, has a, a freshness problem or some other issue, you can very quickly understand two things. First of all, downstream implications of that. So who are the consumers of that data? that you want to probably let them know, or you want to probably um, have them be aware of this issue and start working towards resolution, and vice versa. What are all the upstream um, tables that might be contributing to this problem, which can help you with root cause analysis? Um, and so Lineage really helps us kind of bring this uh, all together and see sort of a strong visual map of, of the issues. So, you know, using these kind of five pillars, we're actually able to introduce a proactive approach to data quality. Um, ones that take into account that you can't actually write manual tests for all of these incidents and that actually using machine learning and automation can help you um, go the distance. And so 70% or more of that can be fully automated with machine learning power detection that automatically identifies, um, uh, you know, patterns in the data, learns um, and, and sort of forecasts what should be expected from your data and lets the team know when that, when that is violated. Um, some percentage of it, 20% or more, is actually based on, um, uh, you know, what we call kind of working with key assets, which is identifying the top assets in your data, those that you'd, you would care more about and that you'd want to introduce an additional level of monitoring for. Um, and then finally, you know, some percent of those incidents will be detected with specific um, SQL rules or other custom rules that you might write to um, introduce specific business knowledge that you um, have about the data that, you know, a machine or anyone else would never have. Then obviously, you don't want to take all this goodness and make sure that your team knows about this at the right time with the right level of information and context uh, through which the partnership with, with PagerDuty um, uh, is very exciting. And so um, bringing all of this together, um, you know, there, there's a couple of kind of obvious areas where data observability can help bring value to a data team, whether that's, you know, first and foremost, thinking about the data engineering team's time, going back to what Manu said earlier, uh, this can often be a big drag on, on your data team. Um, the second is actually reducing data, data downtime, uh, which, as we talked about, has you know, significant revenue and customer implications on your business. Um, and then, you know, a flip side of that is actually ensuring high data uptime for um, customer facing products um, and, and products that influence your customer experience. Um, some less obvious areas of value might include actually maximizing investments across your data stack. You've already implemented a data stack. You've spent a lot of time in making that world class. Now's the time to reap the rewards. Make sure that the data that you're making accessible to your teams is actually trust, trusted and can be used. Um, and finally, you know, using that to actually ultimately help your team increase the adoption of data by business user, users and others across the company who um, might want to use data for the first time. Um, and so excited for, for you all to actually see this uh, live in a demo. I'll, I'll pass over to Jaswinder Durr to take it from here. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hello and welcome all. I'm Jaswinder Paul. In my role in data engineering, the most important metrics is data quality for BI ad hoc queries and data science. Today, I'm going to demo using PagerDuty in Monte Carlo, and we'll show you how we manage data operations internally at PagerDuty. 
So if we go to Monte Carlo and we go under settings and then to the notifications, you can see that we have set up here two, uh, two instances of uh, notifications here. One is where we have set the channel as pager duty and the affected data is all the tables that we have in our system. The event that we have set up over here is in SQL rule breaches, freshness breaches, volume breaches. The cadence that has been set up here is the real time. And there is another instance where we have set up the affected data as only the critical tables in our system. Here, the event that we have set up here is anomalies. The cadence here is real time. We can mute the data sets and we can mute the tables just to reduce the noise. Let's take a look at one of these instances. So what we have set up over here is the delivery cadence as real time. The channel that we have set up over here is pager duty. And the incident that is set up over here is freshman anomalies, volume anomalies, anomalies, and all the anomalies that we have. We have set this up, the affected data, as only the critical tables. So if you can see here, there are only 71 tables that have been included. Here. We can include and exclude the tables as well over here. Let's cancel this. Let's go to one of the incidents here. So in our system, we have different business applications uh, like Salesforce, Zora, and many more. In this case, the incident is raised for the Salesforce table. And the tables that has been raised here is for opportunity, subscription, and contract. We can see over here that uh, the anomaly that has been raised is for exceptionally large number of rows. But typically, we see very less number of rows. So this is a very good example of that. Now look, let's look at the escalation policy in pager duty that we have. As soon as the incidence is raised, raised uh, we, it, it is raised to a dummy user. So the dummy user is used over here so that we have the automated mechanism that takes over and try to rectify all the issues by itself. If it is not done in 20 minutes, the issue is actually raised to the on-call on engineer, uh, which is a primary on-call. If the engineer does not take any action for 30 minutes or, uh, you know, it is not, get it not getting resolved, it, it is escalated to the next level, which is the secondary engineer and so forth. It will go on to the next level. In, you can, we can also set it up for, uh, for, for business stakeholders, uh, like it could be es escalated to a business stakeholder. My team is in different locations and by using this, they take care of these issues proactively. We are able to attack the issues before our stakeholders finds it out. And these metrics are not monitored only at table level, but also at the metric level, which include BI metrics such as ARRs, churns, and more. Alert comes from Airflow, Python, ETL tools, data science models, and more. It gives us 360 degree view on any kind of data quality issues. And we feel by using PagerDuty with Monte Carlo, this probably is the best approach for data observability. Thank you. So Manu, uh, could you highlight for us some of the measurable and tangible results from your implementation of Monte Carlo and PagerDuty? Absolutely. Um, both Monte Carlo and PagerDuty implementation has resulted in more than 50% reduction of data quality issues. Um, and we had it here before and an after scenario. Um, and as obviously this is not an obvious exact data, um, exact science, but uh, we have followed an approach of uh, follow the sun. We have a team uh, which is based in um, uh, India, which is based in Europe, uh, US East and US West. So the idea is that by the time um, uh, the business leaders look at these uh, uh, across the regions, we are ahead of them by using both these tools. We are ahead of them. Our stakeholders know what is happening in case of an issue, and we try to resolve it before they even know uh, in a particular um, uh, region. On top of it, we had a lot of intangible benefits as well uh, because we are able to bring in multiple stakeholders, uh, which was not there earlier, like data science teams. Um, stakeholders who are using data apps. And uh, those are intangibles, which may not be measured, but an increased stakeholder presence is a very, very important factor in uh, data quality as well as uh, 
uh, the incident management and the whole on-call management and automation and uh, escalation that we do as a part of our page duty. So both of them has been a very, very valuable tool uh, as a part of our team. Thank you, Manu. Uh, let's recap the session. So you saw the patient duty architecture uh, for data. Uh, we certainly leverage patient duty and leverage Monte Carlo. Uh, your architecture will probably be different, but more than likely very similar to the architecture that you saw uh, presented. The data problems that organizations face tend to also be very similar, which is good news because we have methodologies to address them. And together we provide detection, resolution, and prevention of data issues, preferably before business users learn about them. And with good data, you get greater adoption and greater trust and better use of your data investments. So Patient Duty and Monte Carlo help you achieve operational maturity within your data environment. And obviously we'd like you to try our combined solution. If you wanna read more, please refer to the integration page. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you.